Most people think of dreams as a limitless playground where the laws of physics don't apply and anything is possible. And that dream you had last night about hunting unicorns with the ghost of Teddy Roosevelt would imply that this is true. But some dream researchers believe that it's actually impossible to read in your dreams. In fact, Harvard University dream expert and assistant professor of psychology Deirdre Barrett says that most dreamers lose not just the ability to read, but the capacity for language altogether. Even though people can describe dreams where they're with a group of friends, if you really ask what specific phrases or sentences were heard, the vast majority of people won't have an answer. When pressed to think about it, people will use the concept of telepathy to describe the communication in these dreams. So if I can conduct the London Philharmonic with one hand and fight a Terminator with the other when I'm dreaming, why can't I do something as simple as read or talk? Parts of the brain that had to do with interpreting language are much less active when you sleep. They include, crucially, two regions known as the Broca and Wernicke area. These two regions, named for the scientists who discovered them, have been crucial to determining what goes on in the brain's language center when we are dreaming. Broca's area is the part of the brain that deals with forming and expressing language, that is, connecting meaning to words. Meanwhile, Wernicke's area deals with grammar and syntax, allowing us to put words together in meaningful ways. Normally, they work together, allowing us to communicate in sentences. But a rare few who manage to remember either reading, hearing, or speaking languages in their dreams, the sentences that come out always suggest that the Wernicke area is defective. In a talk Barrett gave in 2014, she presented snippets of language that college students claim to remember verbatim from their dreams. They make total sense grammatically, but they involve groups of words that don't quite fit with each other. In an observation that's often made in people with a condition known as Wernicke's aphasia. Statements like these suggest that the Wernicke area in particular is the part of the brain's language center that doesn't function too well during sleep. It's safe to say that most people don't use language especially meaningfully when they sleep. But that's what makes people who do so extraordinary. This small class of people, Barrett says, overwhelmingly tends to be made up of writers, especially poets. Part of the reason this is the case is because writers and poets think about language more than most people. And holding these thoughts in the mind immediately before sleep can influence the content of their dreams, she explains. It's kind of a bummer to discover that our dreams aren't limitless, but it's best to consider it a vacation from the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, which are energy-intensive actions that otherwise overwhelm our day-to-day -day lives. And besides, who needs to talk when you're competing in a pieting contest in the White House of Luke Skywalker?